Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and welcome to the seventh video in a series of game development tutorials on how to make your own first person shooter game in Unity. In this tutorial we'll be covering adding some ammo display using UI elements. Remember to subscribe and click the notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial I upload. Feel free to leave a comment and drop a like. I also have a Patreon page where you can help be a part of this channel, and you'll also find all the scripts and the assets to this series there too, along with plenty of other things. You can also now join as a free member. Now, on with the tutorial. So up to now, we have our weapon firing, we have it animating, we have our crosshairs, but we don't know how many bullets we've got in our gun, so that's what we're going to do in this tutorial. What I want to do at the bottom of our game screen is to have like a little box section where we can display our ammo. I want it to be kind of see-through as well. So what we'll do is we'll go to game object, we'll go to UI, and we'll go to text, uh, sorry, raw image. We'll get to text in a moment. Let's call this ammo display. And this is obviously where all of our ammo is going to be. If we go to our game view, you should see maybe it's down here. But if not, it's fine. We'll place it in the correct position. Let's change the anchoring to bottom right. And let's change the color of the actual box itself. So I'm going to change it to a, a very dark gray. And I'm also going to change the alpha to maybe 150. That means we can see through it a little bit. So we can see right there. That's how we can see through it. Perfect. Now we just need to make it a little bit bigger and place it in the correct place on our screen. So I'm going to use the Rect tool and I'm going to drag blue circle to make it bigger. And I'm going to place it round about there. A bit too big at the moment, so let's decrease the size. Still a bit too big. Let's decrease it even more. And again, I guess it's entirely up to you how you want it to look. That'll do, I think. Maybe just shrink it a touch. Perfect. Play around with that a little bit more if you even want one that is. Next what we'll do is we're going to add in some text and this is going to be the display for our ammo. So let's go to game object, let's go to UI and let's go to text mesh pro. You may get a, a box coming up saying you need to import the TMP essentials. If that does happen you just click on import and close that little box. You don't need to import any extras or anything like that. You'll know exactly what I mean when you see that box, if it does pop up. If it doesn't, and you're at the stage where I am, where you have a new text, perfect. Let's have this as ammo, in fact, I'll call this one ammo display. Uh, we'll call this one ammo container, because it's kind of like the background. So what we'll do is ammo display, if I actually name it correctly with an A, uh, we'll play around with this text now. And we'll make it useful. We'll make it visible. Because at the moment it's just a bit small. It just says new text. And we need it to display a number. So let's put 999999 as a number for it to display. Let's use the rec tool once again. And let's place it roughly over the box itself. The ammo container. Let's change the color to a nice maybe yellow color. Again, it's up to you if you want it yellow. It's perfectly fine to have it a different color. Uh, let's have the font size as 72, so it's quite large. Be able to see it, maybe bold even. Yeah, let's bold it. Uh, and let's have the alignment as middle, so it kind of looks, yeah, that should do just fine. You play around with that a little bit more. There's plenty of settings in here and the text to, uh, you know, change, make it look good, whatever. Uh, don't worry too much about fonts. We are going to get to fonts a little later on in this series. Uh, so for me, that'll do just fine. Now, the key to all of this is having a script which is like a globalized script that contains uh, information on ammo. So, for example, on the global object itself, we have our handgun fire script. We can also use that object to contain a global ammo script, and that's what we're going to do. In our scripts and weapons folder, let's right click, create a new script, and we'll call it global ammo. And then open that up in Visual Studio. And in here, what we need to do is a couple of variables. The first variable is going to be a public static variable. Now, we haven't dealt with that just yet. If we go back to handgun fire, we've only declared a variable serialized. And what that means is that this variable is only really accessible inside this script. However, we need a variable inside global ammo which can be accessed publicly. So to do that, we need to get rid of void start and the annotations because we do not need those. And we start by saying public 
static. And its type is going to be integer, so int. So we're saying that this integer is public and it is static. It shouldn't change, but it can be accessed from other scripts. Uh, we'll call it, uh, what can we call it? We'll call it handgun ammo count, and we'll make it equal to 10. So at this point, all we've done is we've said that there is a variable inside this script. Any script, you can talk to me and change this number. We also need a variable that is related to the ammo display on screen. That does not need to be public, it can be serialized. So, serialize field is going to be a game object, and we'll just call it ammo display, semicolon. Now, in order to get this functioning correctly, we need ammo display to be constantly displaying whatever our handgun ammo count is. So in order to do that, we need to access the component that is on ammo display. And that component is this, the text. So in order to get that just right, we need to say ammo display dot get component and in spiky brackets, that component. And it relates to text mesh pro. So T M P R O short for text mesh pro dot T M P underscore text and remember capitalization is crucial in this case because if you don't get your capitalization correct this will not work and if you do have any problems with this script it will be in the pinned comments you can go and download it for free there uh, so close the spiky bracket open close your standard brackets and we'll say dot text is equal to double quote plus handgun ammo count, semicolon, and save. So I know it's just one line of code, but I think it's a lot to kind of take in and fully understand what's going on here. What we're doing is we are saying that the text component inside ammo display that we will declare when we add the script needs to say double quote, which means nothing, it won't display anything, plus the value in handgun ammo count. Now the reason we use this here is because it's expecting a text feature here but we actually have a number feature so we've got to start with a blank or pretend text feature and then add on the number that exists in handgun ammo count so what this will do is it will display the text as whatever value is in here and we'll see this working a little later on so if we go back into unity and if you remember we set our ammo as 99999 and we need to make sure that right now, even if we press play, that 99999 still displays because no script is attached. So it should, it should just say 9999 down the bottom. Let's make sure that is the case. As soon as Unity has had a bit of a think, and it is. Perfect. Obviously, nothing's changing right now. So what we'll do is we will add global ammo to global object. So drag and drop. And you'll notice that we only have one variable here, even though we declared two. So whenever something is public and static, it will not display here. Rest assured, the variable does exist, but you cannot see it visually inside your inspector panel. But don't worry about that too much. We now need to add ammo display over here. Drag and drop. And the great thing is, when we press play now, that 99999 will change to 10. That means that our script is constantly monitoring whatever value is inside of our handgun ammo count. But how do we make it so that whenever we fire our weapon that that number decreases? Easy. We need to go to handgun fire. And in here, we need to add in a line of code which basically says, please take one away from that number. And because it's static, it means that we can access it from this script. So before we play our handgun fire right here, let's say global ammo dot handgun ammo count. Now, this is where things can get a little bit not tricky, but think of this in the same way as how we had this if statement here. We can't just say minus one because it won't work. As you can see, it's underlined. We need to say minus equals one. Now, it's important that you get the minus and the equals the right way around, because if you don't, you, you won't get the desired effect. So this line of code essentially needs to say global ammo 
handgun count, you need to take one away from whatever you are currently equal to. So if it's equal to 10, it will take one away. If it's equal to 9, it will take one away. So let's save that handgun fire script now, head back into Unity, allow it to compile, and once it has, once we go into our game and start firing, we should be able to see that number count down. So let's test this out and just make sure it works. Perfect. Six, five, four. Excellent. And it's as simple as that. Obviously, when we have different weapons, that number can be counted down higher. So you could have you know, like a submachine gun. It obviously would count down quicker than however fast we fire our weapon. Uh, but the key thing to note here is, I didn't get that far, did I? That right now, if we try firing, we simply keep going. So we've got five, four, three, two, one, zero. We go into negatives, which isn't really good, is it? Because how can you have negative eight ammo? So the key to all of this now is to, once we hit zero, stop our weapon firing. And that's what we're going to do in the next tutorial. So rather than keep firing when we get to a negative, we're going to have a cutoff of where we need to reload our weapon. So remember to subscribe and click the notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in this series. And I'll see you next time.